Welcome to Lesson 14D, Faulkner Scan Wedge Flow Solutions. In this lesson, we'll look at several special case solutions of Faulkner Scan wedge flows by varying the Faulkner Scan parameter beta, and then I'll sketch velocity profiles for this family of wedge flows. As a quick summary from the previous lesson, we're talking about boundary layers along this wall where the outer flow velocity field is given as a power law function. An angle gamma can be associated with this exponent from potential flow theory as discussed previously. Here's a summary of what Faulkner and Scan did back in 1931. They derived this similarity equation with these boundary conditions and these similarity variables. And here's some other equations for the constants. The Faulkner scan parameter beta determines the type of flow, namely the wedge angle, and thus the power law. In fact, we get a whole family of solutions depending on choice of beta, the Faulkner scan parameter. So what I'll do here is look at some special cases. The first case will be beta equals zero. Since m is beta over two minus beta, m is also zero. Therefore, u as a function of x is b x to the m, or just b since m is zero here, which is just a constant. So if we set b equal u equal constant, we get a flat plate boundary layer with some delta c, a characteristic boundary layer thickness, growing with x. Also, the exponent b for delta c is 1 minus m over 2, which is just a half here. And constant c is square root of nu 2 minus beta over b, which here becomes square root of 2 nu over u. Therefore, this delta c, which is c x to the b, becomes square root of 2 nu x over u. Our similarity variable eta, which is y over delta c, thus becomes y, square root of u over 2 nu x. And the Faulkner scan similarity equation, when beta is 0, becomes f triple prime plus f f double prime equals 0. Astute students will recognize that this is the same as the Blasius equation. So the solution is identical, and we've already done it. The only difference is this factor of 2 here. That's because the arbitrary constant c is 1 here instead of 1 half that we used in our previous Blasius case. But everything else is identical. So beta equals 0 in the Faulkner scan similarity equation represents the Blasius flat plate boundary layer. And this is the first in our family of solutions. Next, let's try beta equal 1. Plugging in 1 for beta, we get m equal 1. So u of x is bx to the m, or bx. So u is not a constant, but it grows linearly with x. Similarly, we calculate the other constants. We get little b equals 0, and c becomes square root of nu over b. Eta becomes square root of b over nu times y. And the Faulkner scan similarity equation, when beta is 1, becomes f triple prime plus f f double prime plus 1 minus f prime squared equals 0. Do any of the students recognize this flow? Is it stagnation point flow? Yes, Sean. We solved this problem using Runge-Kutta in lessons 10c and 10d previously. Everything here is identical to our previous 2d stagnation point flow problem. The definition of f, the equation, the boundary conditions, even the choice of constant b is the same as previously. As you may recall, we have flow coming down from above into a stagnation point at the origin. And you may recall that the boundary layer was flat, in other words, constant thickness. And that's because b is 0 here, the exponent in the delta c equation. But u is growing with x. So the boundary layer profiles look something like this as the flow accelerates in the x direction. So beta equal 1 is our second in the family of Faulkner scan flows, and it represents 2D stagnation point flow. What if beta is between 0 and 1? This also corresponds to m being between 0 and 1. This ends up being flow over a 2D wedge of angle gamma with flow coming from the left, and our axis is tilted such that x grows along this wall. There's a stagnation point here. Flow enters from the left, and the streamlines will look something like this on the top portion. It's, of course, symmetric top and bottom here. For this case, u of x is b x to the m, which is x to the beta over 2 minus beta. 
Now the question is, how do we relate this exponent to the wedge angle gamma? Well, we solved for potential flow over a wedge in lesson 7d. In that case, the irrotational outer flow was found to be some constant times x to the gamma over 2 pi minus gamma. So we can equate these two exponents. And after a little bit of algebra, you can show that gamma is beta times pi, or beta is gamma over pi. Thus, for given wedge angle gamma, we can calculate beta and use that in our Faulkner scan similarity equation. As a quick sanity check, as I like to call it, when beta is 0, gamma is 0, which means this reduces to a flat plate. When beta equal 1, gamma equal pi, which means this expands to a vertical plate, which is 2D stagnation point flow. And then for any beta in between these two limits, we have flow over this wedge, which is why we call this, in general, Faulkner scan wedge flow. Consider now beta between 1 and 2. This corresponds to m going from 1 to infinity. Without going into all the details, this is flow into a corner that looks something like this, with a streamline that comes in to the origin, and then the flow turns around like that. Of course, it's symmetric. This angle gamma is still beta pi, like it was previously. With this exponent beta, the outer flow accelerates rapidly from the stagnation point along x. And we're talking about the boundary layer growing this way. This would be the case with an extremely favorable pressure gradient, since capital U increases rapidly, and therefore pressure decreases rapidly with x. And I should have labeled x along this wall. This is another in our family of Faulkner scan flows. What about negative beta? Suppose beta goes between negative 2 and 0. It turns out that this corresponds to flow along a wall that suddenly drops downward, and the streamlines move something like that. Again, x is along this wall, and the boundary layer grows along that wall like this. If I continue this horizontal line from upstream, this angle becomes absolute value beta pi over 2 which from our trig class, since these are parallel lines, this angle is also absolute value beta pi over 2. This is thus flow over an expansion corner of angle absolute value beta pi over 2. And unlike our other cases where the origin was a stagnation point, there is a singularity at this origin where capital U is infinity. In this case, ux decreases with increasing x, since we have a negative exponent on x. So this is the case of decelerating outer flow, with u going down and pressure going up. So this family of Faulkner scan flows represents flows with an adverse pressure gradient. Velocity profiles here will have an inflection point, as we discussed previously, for adverse pressure gradient flows. In fact, if you start with beta equals 0 for the flat plate case, and then start making beta be larger in the negative direction, you reach a point where this adverse pressure gradient becomes too steep, and we get a separating flow. It turns out that this happens when beta is negative 0.198838, to be precise, which represents an angle of about 18 degrees. This corresponds to the separating boundary layer profile. I'll just comment here that we can generate solutions of the Faulkner scan similarity equation for any beta using our Runge Kutta code. Note that for each case, you must guess f double prime of zero, like we did for the Blasius case, and iterate until you can satisfy the outer flow boundary layer at infinity, which is typically around eta equal five or so. Finally, let's sketch the family of Faulkner scan solutions depending on the choice of beta, as we've been discussing. I usually leave this as a homework problem for the students, so I'll just do some hand sketches here where we'll plot similarity variable f prime as a function of eta, and eta goes to about 5. Let's start with a high value of beta where all of these profiles asymptote to 1 since u equal capital U at the edge. This would be the case where beta is between 1 and 2. Beta equal 1 is the 2D stagnation point flow. When beta is between 0 and 1, we have our wedge flow with a favorable pressure gradient. 
when beta is exactly zero. This is, of course, the Blasius case, and the profile is linear near the wall, unlike these other curved cases, although I didn't sketch it very well. When beta goes negative, for example, when beta is about negative 0.1, we have an adverse pressure gradient case. And finally, when beta is negative 0.198838, we have the separating profile with a zero slope at the wall. We can keep going and plot profiles for other betas, like negative 0.25. But as we've discussed before, this is unphysical, since the boundary layer equations break down beyond the separation point, and you have reverse flow, destroying the parabolic nature of the boundary layer equations. Well, this is the last of these video lessons on graduate fluid mechanics. I hope that you all learned some things. We certainly did, sir, and we appreciate the lessons. Thank you, Sean. I sure learned a lot, too. Thanks, Professor. You must be really smart to know all this stuff about fluid mechanics. You're welcome, Dud. But actually, I assure you that none of this would be possible except that I stand on the shoulders of giants. Thank you for watching this video. Please subscribe to my YouTube channel for more videos.